राजेंद्र भाई कैन वी स्टार्ट यस व्यंकटेश प्लीज थैंक यू सो मच राजेंद्र भाई हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई एम व्यंकटेश ताडे एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन बीएफ ऑफ इसरे अहमदाबाद चैप्टर टुडेस वेबिनार इज ऑन आईओटी इन हॉस्पिटल न्यू ट्रेंड्स बाय मिस्टर पंकज तिवारी सर अबाउट स्पीकर मिस्टर पंकज तिवारी डिड हिज एमटेक इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग इन आईआईटी कानपुर इन 1983 He has worked with various organizations like Voltas Limited, Tata Honeywell, System Tech, Johnson and Control at Delhi for 30 years at very senior position in the field of air conditioning, BMS, fire alarm and safety, IoT and artificial intelligence. He is working as MEPF and Green Consultancy Head for Central India Projects and ELV Head on Pan India basis at Pankaj Bharkar Associates. At present, he is Regional Director West Two for ISRE and Vice Chairman for FSI General Committee. He was involved in more than thousand projects for past thirty five years in India and abroad. Main key takeaway points in this webinar are as follow: Role of contactless facial readers with thermal camera are going to be mandatory in most of the hospitals. How an analytics can help you in maintaining social distance in hospitals. Role of IoT in ICU. IoT and automation will be necessary in hospital and health care centers. Mr. Pankaj Tiwari sir, over to you. Thank you, sir. Sir, you are on mute. Okay, I'll just share my presentation. Okay, wait for a while. Is my presentation visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, without wasting any time, I'm starting uh, uh, with today's topic: as Internet of Things, that is IoT in hospitals, new trends. Okay. Before I uh, talk about Internet of Things, IoT in hospital, new trends, it is important. for me to tell you all about the integrated building management system present scenario in hospitals in india the system architecture being used is a three layer architecture comprises of field layer control layer and management layer a field layer comprises of all the field sensors which includes the temperature sensor rs sensor a uh, pressure sensor differential pressure sensor and analyzers analyzers can be a ph analyzer and uh, so many other analyzers and other actuating devices in actuating devices you will find uh, the actuators there is kind of actuators on off of fans on on off of uh, heaters and so many other things control layer comprises of ddc ddc is a direct digital controller and integrators for third party integration management layer is nothing but a man machine interface in which you see most of the uh, the graphics the graphic interface or you will also see various kind of reports messages alarms etc so this is a a typical three layer building management system which we have which we are using which we have been using until today if you see the bot bottom of the system architecture you will find all the sensors the field sensors in the middle layer you will find the direct digital controller and integrators and the top layer you will find the management level okay the management level can be in various forms it can be a workstation it can also be connected uh, to your android it can be connected to the remote controller a what one campus can have the multiple multiple workstations if it is a township or a institution there can be a main command control center uh, which which is which is going to be connected through various workstation in other blocks and so on so this is this is what the system architecture which we have been following till today when we talk about the third party integration in hospital most of the hospitals are using uh, the chilled water system some of the hospitals are using combination of chilled water system 
for the operation theaters, for uh, pre and post operations and other critical areas. And as far as uh, the, the rooms are concerned, the patient rooms are concerned, uh, the VRF systems are being used. Uh, so it is some, and most of the time, either it is a totally chilled water system or it's a combination of chilled water and VRF system. The next important point, point of, uh, sort of a system which we integrate as an analog, uh, analog fire alarm system, which is very critical in the sense that uh, uh, once anything happens, any fire takes place or any kind of initiation of a fire is there in any building, we can, we can isolate uh, we can we can switch off certain air handling units and that particular sort of a floor, one floor above and one floor below as per the NBC, because uh, it is important for us not to create any kind of a panic situation in a hospital. Uh, so we we want to confine our uh, the evacuation system messages to that affected floor, one floor above and one floor below. The next point or the next uh, this, uh, next uh, activity is, is the energy metering and data analysis. Most of the buildings are using a lot many energy meters and a lot many uh, parameters which are being monitored by these energy meters. So what we do, we do uh, mapping of all these energy meters at the central place. Then we have DG. That it, uh, the DG, DG is having its own PLC uh, and what we do, we, we replicate certain important parameters from, from, uh, from DG to the BMS system. Lifts, uh, some, some, some of the lifts are also getting integrated where not all the functions are getting integrated, but we can know where the lift is at one particular point of time, or if the lift is stuck up, in which particular floor is stuck up. So all such things. UP, UPS, certain parameters of UPS are also being monitored. <clears throat> This is a time scheduler. You know, time scheduler is a very important, uh, uh, important part of the BMS system software, where uh, you have lot many areas, okay, which needs air conditioning. If you have the conference halls, or if you have certain OPDs, OPDs are operating in certain time frames. Some of the OPDs are operating in the morning, probably from nine o'clock till lunchtime. Some of the OPDs are going to operate from lunchtime maybe in the evening. So what we do, uh, we, uh, this time scheduler is gonna switch on the lights, switch on the air conditioning uh, just before the time at an appropriate time through the adaptive control. So if it is uh, the nine o'clock OPD is starting, probably it's gonna start at uh, 8.45. And if the OPD goes up to one o'clock during lunchtime, up to lunchtime, it's gonna switch off the lights, air conditioning, other, other part in OPD is just during the lunch, just after the, the OPD hours are over. So time scheduler is also an important part of the present day uh, BMS system in a hospital. These, this is an energy dashboard. Now for the benefit of uh, those people who, who do not know what that energy dashboard is all about. Energy dashboard is like a dashboard in your car. In a car, uh, you have the dashboard which shows how much is the fuel, what is the kind of a temperature and so on and so forth and what is the kind of a speed when you drive a car. Similarly, in a hospital, uh, you will come to know what are the, what all are the important temperatures which are happening, which are being monitored in the hospital, pre and post operations. Uh, what is the kind of air conditioning being consumed every day? What is the kind of a water consumption? What is the kind of gas consumption? So these are certain parameters uh, which can be shown in one single dashboard and you'll come to know what is happening. So this also uh, helps the office, uh, the hospital management uh, to, 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 to monitor whether certain areas are, uh, uh, certain areas are using excessive energy or whether the proper energy control are being maintained. So these energy dashboards are now becoming, are becoming very important for any hospital. These, this is, uh, this is one of the kind of report which you get in a BMS system in a hospital, uh, you know, like which shows this is a report of a DG. There are three DGs and there are various, some around 10 to 15 parameters of DG. At one particular sort of a template, you will come to know what all are the parameters of DG1, DG2, and DG3. 
this is this is a, a very uh, interesting uh, graphic which i am showing it to you this graphic shows when uh, when uh, uh, the fire takes place a fire is, uh, initi is is initiated in one of the floor of a hospital and which of the areas which of the opds are getting affected by this fire so this particular template or a graphic gives helps to the firefighters which floor to approach and which areas where you actually need to sort of the quench uh, to quench, quench the fire first so that it cannot propagate to the other areas so this is a very interesting graphic which i have shown it to you i just want to show you a case study of a hospital uh, which i have done very recently started in january 2020 this is a vishesh hospital in indore super specialty 300 bed hospital in indore uh, uh, which is now acquired by uh, jupiter hospital in mumbai so this is uh, this is the latest super specialty hospital which you can say in central india in this particular hospital there are two blocks a front block is a hospital block which is a 300 bedded hospital the hospital just behind the main block is a hot hostel block which is not yet started but it's going to is going to have around 50 rooms the idea of having this uh, the ho hotel block is that if, uh, if if the families come uh, from from the nearby areas they can stay in this hotel and uh, uh, it will be easier for them to take care of their uh, uh, they take care of their relatives the back side of uh, the hotel block you you can see the the plant room the uh, the gas tank and all other things so in this particular job uh, practically uh, there is a seamless integration of fire then access in the video sign fire alarm and evacuation scanning ventilation in this particular hospital we have gone in for plc based uh, co system in the basement uh, which is being monitored through the co so carbon monoxide sensors uh, of course heating is little bit for the process then we have the air conditioning in uh, in various kind of areas or operation theaters are having all the micro filter of uh, the hepa filters and all the latest nbh uh, uh, parameters which are being maintained in the hospital uh, light water and so on these are the system which i just i'm just going to sort of brief you very very uh, sort of briefly intelligent fire alarm system which is analog addressable fire alarm system which is covering the whole building public address system is basically a is an evacuation system which is an integral part of the fire alarm system ip based access control system right now it is only for the uh, for the um, attendance management and a uh, uh, little bit uh, some of the areas which are which is going to be extended to other areas a uh, very very elaborate uh, ip based uh, video surveillance system which which not only takes care of the the corridors the important uh, rooms the opds uh, stores pathological lab and so on and it is also taking care of the uh, the periphery of the hospital uh, the entrance area the basement area where the services are located so very elaborate close to 250 cameras are there this hospital is having a nurse call system a nurse call system is a, is an analog type of an uh, nurse call system it is not an ip based system uh, integrated building management system which is which is integrated to the chiller plant manager the chiller plant manager is of uh, carol of italy uh, which is being uh, uh, part of uh, integral part of the prestopia uh, chillers in this particular job then the fire alarm system which is edwards which is seamlessly integrated with the building management system then we have integrated dgsat ups we have also done mapping of uh, all the energy meters we have also had some energy dashboards in this particular job this is a fire alarm system actually this uh, fire alarm system is having two panels uh, one panel is for the main hospital and the second panel is is a is for the hotel block uh, and both are networkable type so the main fire alarm panel can access to all the information of the panel which is uh, going to be there in the hotel block 
<clears throat> access control system is a very basic right now, which is, as I've told you, takes, takes care of attendance and other things. <clears throat> very broad IP-based CCTV system in this job we have uh, sort of used. This uh, particular uh, CCTV system is also having a, uh, the, the possibility of analytics. This is a nurse call system, but nurse call system is a, is an, is it, is a standalone system, which is analog system. VESDA system is, is, is provided for uh, rooms like uh, MRI. MRI is, is a room where you cannot take any metallic substance inside. So the right uh, kind of uh, application is VESDA. This is a typical graphic which you can see uh, for uh, this particular job where we have uh, the, the, the main chillers, chilled water systems are then integrated, uh, the, the connected to the primary system, primary pumping system, the secondary pump system, cooling towers and so on. This is a typical graphic uh, which, which depicts all the parameters of uh, uh, temperature, the return air temperature, the cooling a cooling coil, how much is the valve open, the status of the fan, the status of the filter, and so on. This is, a, this is the kind of a table which shows all the parameters of treated fresh air, HUs of the hospital at one particular, one single template. So it is easier for an operator to find out what is going on in various air handling units. There are close to 90 air handling units of various type, floor mounted, ceiling suspended, and, and including the TFA. So now, whatever I have shown it to you is, a, is, is as, as you can say, is a state of art building management system, integrated building management system, uh, which got installed in Vishesh Hospital in Dor. Technically advanced system, but the biggest problem is working in silos. When we, when we say working in silos, the nurse call system is an independent system. Uh, the various uh, uh, MIS system of hospital, uh, they are working in silo. Various uh, uh, machines, the typical machines medic of the medical, of, of, of the hospital areas, MRIs, those are all working in silos. Most of the life-saving equipment the hospital are working in standalone mode. Non-standard protocol in life-saving equipment is a big problem. Due to non-standard protocol, management of the healthcare facility becomes very complex. Because the thing is, uh, the person who's, who relates to the MEPF system, he's sitting in a BMS room. He can definitely take care of all the HVAC, electrical, plumbing, firefighting, and all such, uh, all such parameters. But when it's a question of in interfacing with a, with a help desk, interfacing, uh, with a nurse call system interfacing with uh, the medical equipment is not taking place as yet. Now, solution to present problem is IoT based unified platform. You know, unified, unified platform is going to be the need of the R. IoT based unified platform with the integration of mechanical, electrical, plumbing, firefighting. When you talk about ELB, then it takes care of building management system, fire alarm system, access control, CCTV, audio visual, lighting, data, voice, imaging, then, uh, then help desk, MIS, medical equipment in one single dashboard. This is going to be the need of the R. And I'm telling you why it is going to be the need of the R is because most of the hospitals are now very professionally managed and uh, some of the hospitals are also uh, being uh, managed by the facility managers. So if all this information is available in what we call as a command control center, then it is very easy uh, for, uh, for the hospital management, doctors and, and the facility managers to take some quick decisions because everything is going to be available at one single place. Right now, command control center, which takes care of all these things is missing. 
although we have an integrated ibms room in vishesh hospital but we are not getting information of nurse call system we are not getting information of uh, the automation or the machine part of the hospital we are also not getting information of help desk now if you see a uh, unified platform if you if you see what is going to be the unified platform for all the feature for hospital in india and abroad uh, which will, which is going to take care of integrated bms security safety help desk telephony mis medical equipment everything you know and this is going to be the necessity because if you see uh, the kind of situation we are facing even even the very even the very advanced countries like us and and france and germany they they could not cope up with the kind of uh, sort of uh, rush of patients that taken place due to the outburst of the covid so we need to be now most of the countries and most of the hot hospital owners need to rethink about their strategies what is the kind of platform which they are going to have in their hospital in future to avoid all these kind of mismanagement okay now edge device is something which is a very important uh, uh, concept of uh, or a part of uh, internet of thing edge device is any hardware that controls data between two networks cloud cloud computing iot have elevated the role of edge device ushering in the need of more intelligence computing power and advanced services at the network edge which is going to be the need of the hour now i just want to share a very interesting uh, slide some 10 leading companies which includes the it companies the service provider they have defined internet of internet of thing in different kind of a definition there is no single definition of an iot atnt says that the iot is a wireless connectivity to the things cartnet says that the internet of thing is the network of physical objects that contain embedded technology to communicate the the sense or internet and uh, uh, inter interact with their internet status or the environment itu connection of everyday objects and devices to electronic network very simple definition mckenzie mckenzie says when the virtual world capabilities meet meet the real world businesses sensors and actuators embedded in a physical objects from the roadways to the pacemakers are linked through the wireless network this is what the definition given by mckenzie where is on given an we uh, given the definition of iot as empowering people and business through the technology sap sap has given the definition of iot as physical objects integrated into the information network and active participation of various business process intel intel says that it's made up of billions of smart devices from minuscule chip to mammoth machine that use wireless technology to talk to each other and so on and and to us accenture the leading it provider they say that internet of everything they are not using word internet of thing they are using a word internet of thing which also takes care of uh, uh, the devices and uh, and the man and human in connect with the physical world to the internet cisco cisco is one of the very few companies who have started the internet of thing in this world almost 10 years back bringing together people process data things to make network connections relevant and valuable than ever before turning information into actions that created capabilities richer experience and unprecedented economic opportunity for the business individual and country so these are certain very interesting a uh, definition of internet of thing or internet of everything given by various leading companies and service providers edge devices in iot have already 
uh, explain to you. Now, IoT-based building management system architecture post-COVID-19 situation. This is this is now a very important topic for all those people who are designing the hospital, whether they are MEPF consultant, they are ELV consultant, or whether they are uh, AV IT consultant. For everyone, this is very important. IoT-based building management system architecture in new scenario will have two layers rather than three layers, which I have explained to you while I was explaining the Vishesh Hospital system architecture. The first layer will have IoT-based chillers with CPM, IoT-based AHUs. Lot many companies in India have now come out with IoT-based air honey units. I have witnessed those IoT-based AHUs in the, retail, in the recent uh, Acrex exhibition in Delhi. IoT-based pumping system, Leading companies, including Brunfos and all other leading com pumping companies have come out with the IoT-based pumping system. IoT-based sensors. IoT-based sensors are going to be very, very important, especially for the hospital kind of an environment. IoT-based detectors, IoT-based cameras, RFID tags, IoT-based instruments such as temperature sensors, scanning human body temperature sensors, and all such things are going to play a very, very important role when we talk about the unified platform. The above IoT-based sensors, edge devices will communicate with a cloud server through gateway for sharing analysis of data through central software and the respective corrective actions. So the major thing which is going to happen is that all these IoT-based sensors, machines, devices, are going to communicate with the cloud server directly, okay? Which is going to be a very, very major change in the field of BMS. So um, this is what is what has started happening. BMS to IoT-based BMS system. We are now in a transition phase. Lot many things are happening, and in next two years, you would witness lot many things going to happen. When you talk about the IoT based platform for the BMS. Definitely a lot of signal cabling, communication cable, power cable. You know, we, we, we run kilometers of cables in a, in a hospital where you talk about signal cable, communication cable, power cable. Hopefully, most, not all, but most of them are going to go away. With the inclusion of more and more IoT based devices, IoT-based machines, number of direct digital controller, the IO input output hardware points are likely to be reduced drastically. That's gonna happen for sure. Less chances of human error while preparing the control logics for the software, since everything is gonna be centralized. So there are gonna be certain standard programs of software, okay? so. All those programs which are being uh, loaded by our, uh, by our engineers and the software engineers and the technicians at the site and the errors and the compatibility problems hopefully are going to go away. You know, now we already started having chillers with the chiller plant manager. So these chiller plant managers, I'm quite sure, are, are going to be the IoT devices. Some companies, the leading companies, including the Carrier, York, and Daikin, they already started monitoring their chillers from the cloud computer sitting at one place. So they are connecting multiple sites uh, chillers uh, to a central place where in case of any problem to the chiller, the problem can be identified or uh, the corrective actions can be taken place. And there is no, probably practically the, the physical movement of a technician or a supervisor or any engineer to the site uh, becomes zero. Because uh, you know, like you can, uh, you can download the software, you can take the corrective action, you can upload it, you can make the system running, you can talk to the people and uh, practically at two, two different places, one at, the, one at the place where the chiller is located and one place where the, 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 the cloud uh, the, the server is there, 
everything would be taken care of. Similarly, IoT in air handling units. You know, this is going to be very, very interesting and certain companies have already started using this thing in a very big way. I want to give you, uh, of course, I, I want to give you an example if there are multi multiple uh, healthcare centers located in a country of one particular chain and they want to monitor various kind of parameters, various kind of uh, uh, sort of equipment from a centralized place. Now, this is becoming possible because the thing is, it is for, for a small healthcare center, it is not possible to have a dedicated building management system. But if you have the IoT based air handling units, and if they are being monitored through app to, or through a cloud computer at a centrally located place, you can monitor and control the multiple healthcare nursing rooms or, or healthcare centers, okay? Which is gonna be the need of the art. <clears throat> Basement ventilation nowadays, what is happening is it is it is an it is a, a system which is basically either using a program a programmable logic controller, ELC, or a DDC controller, which is connected to the, the series of jet fans as per as per the latest NBC. And based on the CO level at that particular basement in comparison to the, the outside uh, uh, carbon uh, carbon monoxide uh, level uh, they switch on switch on the number of jet fans so that they can maintain the carbon monoxide level in the basement you know various companies in india are all now offering wireless detectors uh, very recent very recently we have used a wireless detector in a multi storey building in gujarat you know which is uh, which is good thing to happen but the only thing is uh, the time, uh, the thing which is right now missing is that it's important for all the, all the manufacturers in the country should know that their wireless system with fire alarm panel should conform to all the NFPA requirement, okay? The, the, the units cannot work in silos. As if NFPA says that the detectors, if the, the fire takes place in one particular floor, the equipment of that particular floor, like air handling units, the fire damper operation, should take place automatically from the fire alarm panel, wireless fire alarm panel. So even the devices need to be connected wirelessly or through remotely through this fire alarm system. So this is what is the is the is the uh, is, is the problem which I have faced. Uh, hopefully that is going to be resolved in a, in a future days. Wireless cameras are now very common, okay? <clears throat> IoT-based system architecture, if you see, now what is gonna be the, the system architecture for IoT-based system, the BMS system? You see this, there are gonna be only two layers. Unlike traditional BMS system, IoT-based system will have only two layers. The first layer is gonna be the field sensing layer is gonna have IoT-based edge devices. Edge, uh, edge of, this will comprise of IoT-based chillers, AQs, sensors, RFID tags, and so on. This I'm giving you only very few examples. Second layer will be IoT-based gateway, which will connect to IoT device to the cloud. And the all computation, software, analytics, they are all gonna be located at the cloud. These are going to be some of the uh, sort of uh, the dashboards which I can envisage once we go from the legacy BMS system to the IoT based system. One very interesting IoT based dashboard I would like to share with you. Uh, this is the dashboard for a newly born child incubator. It is, it is showing the temperature it is showing the other parameters. It is also streaming the picture of a newly born child to the single dashboard. So this is what I'm talking about, the, the, the unified platform, which are gonna be the future of the hospital, 
and probably this one single dashboard is going to be part of the central command control center now changes required for icu iccu to take care of any infection to doctors nursing staff in future i'm not going to talk much about the air conditioning part but it's important for me to tell you that icu and iccu in hospital need to be with 100% exhaust air today we have covid tomorrow going to be some other other virus we do not know what is going to be the nature of the virus but one thing is for the sure that all the hospital in this country all the isolation room in this country need to be ready with the icu iccu with 100% exhaust air negative pressure need to be maintained in icu iccu to avoid spreading of virus you must have seen so many doctors so many medical staff got affected while uh, serving to the patient so this is going to be a very very critical thing and the above requirement are necessary for all the future hospital to avoid doctors supporting staff getting infected from the patient iot based ddc controller with a differential pressure sensor to maintain the negative pressure it is also going to make sure that it's going to have a proper damper control and so on so 100% exhaust here and negative pressure in these areas are going to be very important and all the future hospital and all the hospital which are going to be upgraded need to have this thing in place <clears throat> next point which i would like to tell you is that maintaining rh level between 40 to 60% will be crucial below 40% there is going to be a possibility of spread of virus like covid or like any other virus but if the rh is more than 60% then there is going to be a possibility of chances of spread of fungus and all okay so all the hospital all the upgradation of hospital all the future hospital need to maintain rh levels in these areas i see ICU and other areas between 40 to 60 percent is going to be very important part of the design. Now, tracking of asset using RFID tags and IoT in hospital. You know, none of the hospital all over the world were ready for a COVID kind of a situation. You know, even even. the advanced countries like us france germany they are struggling to take care of the situation but tracking of assets using rfid rfid tags it will be very important especially when hospitals to take care of sudden rush of patients if the hospital is ready for few patients some 200 patients or 300 patients and if we have all of a sudden at one point of time you have hundreds of patients coming into your hospital uh, if if you are not ready with your asset management how many ventilators you have how many other equipments you have there is going to be a chaotic situation so just to avoid this kind of a chaotic situation you need to have the asset management because maybe certain ventilators have gone for the repair okay so you need to track all these things use of wireless sensor for temperature and rh monitoring of vaccines and blood samples during the transportation you know when the man vaccines are manufactured at a pharmaceutical company they are they are placed in a proper environment but what about the situation when these vaccines are supposed to be transported in a refrigerated van from one place to another place is also a challenge okay because if 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 you are not monitoring the temperature and rh of these refrigerated vans from a remote place then there is a possibility of things going bad so this iot is going to play a very very major role for monitoring of these movable vehicles refrigerated vans from one place to second place now the biggest problem which we have faced this time is that you are not supposed to touch anything 
in a hospital or any public place. So biomatic readers definitely are going to be replaced by iris readers and facial readers with a thermal camera, that is for sure. During this COVID-19 situation, viruses are the biggest problem in contact uh, we have faced is how to take care of attendance of the people. You must have seen that there was, a, there, there was a directive by the government of India that biometric readers are not going to be used during this COVID situation. So IRS readers are going to replace for the attendance part. But the next thing is facial reader with thermal camera for the face recognition, forehead temperature, and mass detection. They are going to be the need of the art. And how it's going to happen? This is all going to happen using the thermal camera with the possibility of uh, measuring the temperature and using the analytics to find out the person entering in the hospital is wearing a mask. Okay, So this is going to be, I'm quite sure, is going to be a mandatory requirement of most of the hospitals in future. Social distancing. You know, social distancing is such a new concept. So many people what not, were not aware in this country what social distancing is all about. Okay, but over a period of nine, last 70 days, people have started knowing what social distancing is all about. So your IP-based CCTV system with analytics definitely is going to make sure that people entering into the lifts, people who are there in the queues of various areas of the hospital, whether it's a pharmacy or a OPD, they follow a proper rule of maintaining a proper distance. This is also a very interesting thing which I would like to tell you, that the thermal camera is capable of giving you mapping of heat zones of a crowded area of lanes in a hospital, okay? If you, you, you can see the red, red marks in this particular map, these red marks are nothing but the crowded areas of various lanes in OPD or a pharmacy or a main entrance where the patients are getting admitted in an emergency ward so all these maps are going to give you the analytics and through analytics, you will make sure that these crowded zones are taken care of. And if there is a crowd, the proper social distancing is being maintained. A very interesting thing which I would like to tell you is that in future, just you can have the motorized windows and isolation rooms which can be monitored uh, through the automatic damper through a remote device. You are not supposed to physically open it. So this is also going to happen in a very, very big way in a hospital and in all the critical areas. Next, very interesting thing is motorized windows. Even the blinds the blinds can be monitored through the remote device. You are not supposed to go there and physically open the blinds. The blinds can be monitored through the remote, remotely operated thing using IoT. Very interesting thing which I would like to share with you. Uh, one of the industries, one of the person in Singapore have invented what they call is IOT based can you tell you ventilator see most of the most of the countries in this situation are facing the problem of isolation wards or the isolation rooms because the the places where thousands of patients have you know like come in due to the outbreak of the covid 19 there there is a shortage a shortage of uh, uh, the isolation rooms, the ventilators. So IoT-based televentilators can be installed in a house, and it can be uh, it can be uh, and in any of the isolation ward in a in a remote place because certain hotels and certain uh, sort of uh, banquet halls are also converted into the uh, isolation wards. 
So these televentilators can be installed. You simply need to switch on the ventilator and connect to the Wi-Fi. Log into the portal to the managed ventilator from a central control command room of a hospital or a nursing room. So this particular device can help you, you know, like monitoring the, the various parameters of the patient, which are there in the isolation wards, like what I have explained to you. In one of the country in Spain, they have converted the whole auditorium into an isolation ward. Okay, and even in Mumbai, uh, they have uh, converted uh, in BM in uh, BKC area. They have now got a huge uh, sort of area converted into in, into the isolation ward. So these uh, tele ventilators will be of great help. Next thing is contactless elevator. You know. This is very interesting. Contactless, contactless elevator is successfully applied application of a media-free aerial imaging technology used by a Chinese company, a speed and hospital for COVID patient in, in city. In fact, I have received uh, certain information from certain companies in India telling me that the lifts can be operated using a contactless that, uh, application web application which is which is loaded in your in your android or phone so if you if you load that application in your uh, sort of a android and if it is connected to the left left control you can monitor your left using that application in your android which is a future possibility iot based devices in healthcare health band Healthband is, is a classic case of IoT-based system which we have been using for so many years. So many people must not be aware that this Healthband is nothing but an IoT device. And all the parameters of your body and uh, if you do running and how you count your steps and all these things are happening through a cloud computer. Okay? So many people are not even aware of it. Glucometers are going to be IoT based. Blood pressure monitoring is going to be IoT based. Temperature monitoring is going to be IoT based. So these things are going to be very handy. If you have the multiple healthcare unit, small units, where you are not supposed to have so many rooms, but you can have certain isolation rooms, certain ICU rooms, certain ICU rooms, pre and post operation rooms can be monitored from a central place in future. How IoT devices, patient care, and optimizes hospital facility operations. The patient room control mobile app through which patient can monitor temperature, lighting level, window blinds without having to call the nurse. It can be, it can be there in the isolation ward away from the main hospital. So these these kind of uh, app are going to be very, very popular in the future, no doubt about it. I don't know how many people are aware that uh, you can have a pneumatic tube system in hospital. The pneumatic tube system is also installed in a Vishesh hospital, which we have commissioned, uh, what got commissioned in the month of January. The pneumatic system is nothing. It's going to be the answer for delivering medicines from one part of the hospital to another without having to use any medical staff. So this is also going to be a contactless thing. Robotics. Of course, robotics is going to be a very important part in a COVID kind of a situation. As you are aware that a lot many hospital in, in, in abroad in China and the various part of Europe and US, they are using robotic nurses are being used to deliver medicines and put to infect patients in so many hospitals and you don't have to use any medical staff. So chances of your medical staff getting infected is zero. Of course, the robotics is also gonna play a very, very major role in future operations where everything is gonna be, is gonna be monitored remotely using IoT and robotics from a central command control center. 
and you probably are not going to have any doctors and nursing staff there in those hospitals. This is what is going to happen. So with this uh, slide, uh, my presentation is complete. Any questions? Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, you, Pankaj sir, uh, on behalf of Ishra Ahmedabad chapter and everyone who has, uh, you know, spent their Sunday afternoon in uh, listening to your really amazing lecture here. And uh, it is uh, we are uh, we are really grateful to your uh, support as you have, as you have always supported Ahmedabad chapter. We have quite a few questions from our uh, uh, attendees, so. I think the first question is uh, from Mr. Bipin. Is this Vishesh Hospital newly built or existing hospital converted into IBMS? Uh, Bipin, uh, they all they are having a existing hospital which is a very small hospital of seventy bed. This is a new hospital uh, which is built at the at the uh, at the bypass of Indore. Okay, very close to the uh, close to the university. Which is a 300 bed hospital. This is the second hospital, super specialty hospital built by this group in Indore. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, next question is, uh, which is the platform used? Uh, which is the software used for this case study? Is there is there any specific software that was used, sir? See, the thing is, I can tell you only one thing is that uh, the Vishesh Hospital has uh, has uh, has got a, a Schneider system. Which they have got their own software, but most of the integrations are have done in this hospital using Backnet over I uh, Backnet over IP. Okay. So Backnet over IP was uh, the protocol which was very predominantly used integrating the chiller, chiller plant manager, the power alarm system, the DG set, or the energy meter monitoring is has happened uh, using the Backnet over IP. Okay. Uh... Next question is from uh, Mr. Sandeep Belsare from Indore. Uh, his question is very relevant in these times of cyber warfare. His question is, how safe is the BMS system and other IoT equipments? Can this be hacked or manipulated? Uh, see, the, uh, hello. Uh, Sandeep, to answer your question is that uh, most of these systems uh, are from the uh, world-known companies like Honeywell, Siemens, Schneider, Johnson Control. And... Uh, they are all uh, very well uh, protected through the cyber. And in fact, I have yet to come across in my 35 years of a career whether anybody has hacked any of my site uh, in last 35 years. No, so okay. safe systems. Uh, and another follow-up question from Mr. Bilsari is: uh, Is there any special care that is need to be taken, and has government issued any? guidelines or regulations on this uh, IBMS as such? No, government has not issued any guidelines as such for the, the automation part or IoT part. Because the thing is, uh, uh, you know, like um, if Ishre has a, a sort of issued certain guidelines for the operation theaters, ICU and all that. What IoT, what IoT does is the implementation of control, like uh, maintaining the negative pressure, how the temper control is going to operate. So this is this is supplementing what is what uh, the air conditioning uh, person has designed and desired to maintain in the certain uh, parameters in one particular ICU or ICCU. Okay. Uh, next question is from Mr. Riaz. His question is: How can we convert the existing BMS into an IoT platform? See, uh, this is a transition period which I would like to tell you. Uh, as I have told you that uh, the system which we have install, installed recently in a Vishesh hospital is a three-layer system. Uh, but many manufacturers, I do not want to give any name, most of the leading manufacturers, Honeywell, Siemens, Schneider, Johnson Control, Souter, now they are coming up with a with a, uh, with a IoT-based devices and IoT-based uh, controllers which can con communicate with the cloud computer or cloud server directly. Okay, so we are going to overcome one one particular uh, layer, which what we call as a man machine interface. Okay, or certain other things which we are going to overcome. So it's going to be two layer system. 
okay uh, one question is that uh, recently isre developed uh, this uh, guidelines uh, for co uh, for covid where relative humidity is advised to be kept uh, from 40 to 60 percentages yeah. so what would be the implication of uh, that kind of uh, uh, guideline in this iot uh, system see most of the most of the hospital right now only only bothered about maintaining the temperature but uh, in all the future hospital and the upgradation of hospital temperature plus relative humidity is going to be too critical for all the uh, icu iccu and other areas because as has as have explained to you that below 40% there is a possibility of uh, infection spreading like covid and above 60% if the humidity is more than 60% there is a possibility of fungus formation which is also going to be dangerous okay good right sir uh, next question is from uh, our immediate past president and uh, uh, expert uh, consultant mr shailendra vyas how uh, the uptime of 100% is maintained uptime of 100% uh, is is can be maintained only using the redundancy and uh, you know the redundancy like hospital hospital is is you know like data center is a is a critical a critical application where you maintain a, a redundancy and you you say that you have uptime for uptime uh, red, uh, uptime uh, redundancy uh, of around 99.9% the only way you can maintain redundancy is by using the redundant controllers or the redundant devices okay and it's going to happen it's going to happen because because all these systems the transition phase is taking place and once we use the the cloud server the cloud servers are nothing but some data center located in somewhere some part of the world okay and these data centers are all advanced data centers using the uptime of 99.9 okay or even even better okay next uh, question is it's it's more related to the commercial aspect of this sir how how would it how would an iot system would impact uh, in, uh, to the total project cost in terms of percentages see the thing is uh, it is it is uh, it is a transition phase and uh, okay. all all of us like uh, designer like us are very closely looking into the commercial impact what is going to be the commercial commercial impact but as i have as i have explained during my presentation is the major part of uh, present day ibms is that we are uh, we run thousands of running meters of cables okay signal cable power cable cat6 cable and all such cables okay so if we are going to have more and more edge devices iot based devices which are going to communicate to the the cloud computer directly i'm quite sure a very rough estimate is that approximately 30 to 35% of benefit of the price we would be able to get in next future maybe better than that right sir uh, mr shailendra vyas is, has also joined us uh, he had a uh, follow up question i would uh, request shailendra sir to ask that directly shailendra sir you are you are online sir sangat sir ha ji sir boliye sir uh my question was uh how this the failure concern uh, in case of net failure how it is controlled or any alert mode to, uh, to the manual uh, thing so shailendra bhai which i have told you that the uh, future devices are all going to be edge devices whether it's going to be chiller whether it's going to be pumping system whether it's going to be air handling unit whether it's going to be temperature sensor they will all will be connected to the data center in some part of the world what we call as a cloud cloud server or a cloud computer these data centers as you know are 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 maintaining 99.9 and they having having a huge amount of redundancy and they are very proven uh, sort of the systems so you know like um, Uh, i'm i'm very very uh, rather i'm very optimistic that the reliability of the system with iot based platform is going to be much better than what we are using right now 
Correct, sir. But see, uh, there are cases when the network fails. Uh, we we are we are across India. We are facing uh, poor network uh, issues. So in that case, once see uh, in hospital, it is very critical to have continuous monitoring through. Our, if we are dependent on IoT, we are we are uh, uh, less less uh, communicating on manual mode. Correct. So uh, how how it is ensured that there is no breakage on uh, 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 network? Shalinder Bhai, there are two things. One thing is an internet, and second thing, what we call as an intranet. Okay. So hospitals are going to have their own intranet. I'm quite sure. And the way things are going in a IoT mode, uh, all these things would be taken care of because they also know in the heart of their heart that the biggest thing is going to be the network. Okay, and the speed of network. So uh, uh, you know, like uh, certain things, uh, I would not be in a position to answer probably right now. But uh, people understand that that like a data center. Hospital is also going to become a critical facility in future. I'm quite sure. Because same question I read in the question and answer by some. Uh, uh, no, no, it's uh, a very interesting uh, question and uh, other, uh, uh, professional also. also. That's why. Yeah, yeah, this is a very relevant question, Chalendra Bhai. Thank you, thank you, sir. Right, sir. So we are. It is always a treat to hear from you. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Yeah, Ashutosh. We are done for the questions, sir. I think uh, what Sharendra was sir asked was the question also asked by some fellow attendees as well. So I thought let us have a one-to-one -one discussion with uh, two uh, absolute experts on this subject. So, Thank you, Ashu. Yes, sir. Sharendra, so, bhai, Shalendra bhai, I would also like to uh, tell you one or two very important things. Uh, see, the thing is, uh, uh, as you know that. Uh, is starting from a total standalone kind of a system of VMS, which you have been seeing for the last so many years. Okay, in last five years, the transition phase is taking place where uh, you have the convergence of IT, voice, and data, and everything in one single platform, including the BMS. Okay, so this is the second phase. The next phase is definitely is going to be all these devices. Getting connected to the to the, the 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 server, and you know this is going to help, uh, especially for those people who are having the multiple hospitals or who are having the multiple healthcare centers all over India or all over the world, because it's very very easy to monitor using these devices from one single place. And what that is, and I'm telling you, there is definitely is going to be a concept of what we call as a command control center. And command control center is nothing, but it's going to be a unified platform where by present day IBMS is also going to have a place for IP telephony, for a help desk, for other machines, computer, all integrated seamlessly. Absolutely, sir. Uh, absolutely. The internet of things, IoT is, uh, is a blessing to the uh, mankind. If but. The uh, only concern is we should not become so much robotic uh, that uh, any failure in this uh, that uh, results in a disaster. That's the only. Boss, boss, but uh, Shailendra Bhai, I can tell you is that uh, what is the kind of network connectivity which we are using three years back, and what is the kind of network connectivity which we are having right now? There is a there is a huge difference, boss. And you know, uh, most of us are operating from uh, from home and using Zoom call like this. And still, we are managing it very nicely. But sir, my concern is that we are not getting paid enough. Sir, 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 I would request Harshal sir to give a word of thanks. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Pankaj sir, for this wonderful session. And thank you all the participants for participating in this event. Um, we, 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 because of your participation, we are encouraging to do this type of activities. Thank you, sir, for this uh, wonderful session. Uh, I think so participant has uh, got a lot of doubt clear regarding the IoT system. And it is a future. A lot of hospitals have started using this type of devices. 
and a uh, lot of people are using the robotic technology for their operations and uh, this uh, robotic nurses also started in india that's uh, uh, thank you sir for the wonderful session thank you very much thank you, thank you sir thank, thank you tiwari sir mr bhai thank you thank thank you for participating thank you upon sir sir okay. ji thank you very much sir ji thank you thank you thank you rajendra okay rajendra close the session okay